swimming along in the deep blue sea. I have all pretty women fishing after me, fishing after me, fishing after me, etc. Catfish blues. G'day folks, how you going? Pat Curley, LearnCigarBoxGuitar.com with uh, having a look at how to play a one chord blues, in this case catfish blues, um, and exploring um, all the various things that you can do with, with just the one chord. A right? couple of preliminaries. I'm using a combination of um, flat pick and fingers on this, but that's just because I thought I'd try something different. You can do it with your thumb and your fingers or just with a pick. And I'll show you that in a minute. We've got a four string guitar tuned G, D, G, B to a major chord, G major chord. And uh, yeah, Catfish Blues. Uh, Muddy Waters, of course, recorded it called, it, uh, called it Rolling Stone, which is where the band got the name from. Um, and Jimi Hendrix did it. Um, there's a few little Hendrix type things in there that I played before. Lots of people have done this very old song. You wouldn't know it, I'd imagine, if you've come to this. Anyway, let's have a look at a few things with it, shall we? The riff. I'm playing the bass note first, and then on the first beat of the bar, on the downbeat, I've got that four note, which is the fifth fret on the second string. There. And I'm bending it up. And then pulling off, bending up, bring it back, and then pull it off in a hurry. Like that. Real classic sort of bluesy thing to do, yeah? I'll do it slower. So it's bend up so you hear that note. And then I'm going to play the one note there on the fifth fret on the third string. Right? So I'll get up close where you can see my left hand there and it's again. So that's your riff. Right? Now to get the rest of it in there you've got you're hitting open strings with your pick. Right? So it's um, there's your beat. I hit the open bass string to start with on an upstroke because it's just before the downbeat. If you can get the upstroke downstrokes right with this, um, it'll sound much stronger. So as you pick, I'm going up and then down and then all just with the, um, the bend and then the pull off. So the next note that I actually pick is that one note there on the fifth fret, third string with my pick upstroke. Okay? So again, I'll get up nice and close where you can see it here. Yeah. So it's so down, oops, up, down, up, and then big chord to go down again. So you can hear that the strong notes are on the down stroke, on the down beat. That's why you pick it like that. So what I'm doing there is just sort of hitting the snare drum, really, is what it sounds like. So I'm muted with my left hand and just playing down. I could play a chord. I could. Yeah. You could also put some little licks in there. So the licks I had before. That's kind of a Hendrix signature thing, isn't it? Uh, flat seven down to the one, so that's third fret, third string, fifth fret. Yeah, if you've ever heard Jimi Hendrix, you've heard that. And likewise, that one there, that's um, the bluesy flat third note, so that's the same as going open but I'm just going because that's where the riff is and I can get a bit of vibrato on that um, 
fretted note too. There's a good riff to put in between. Another one that I did before was straight down the blue scale, which was there, right? Something like that, which brings me to my blue scale, right? So now the, the signature thing about this lick is this bit, that bend from that note there on the fifth fret up to that note there, which you'd normally play on the sixth fret, but I'm bending it. So what that note there is, the one that I'm bending up to, it's in between the fourth note and the fifth note of the scale. It's called the flat five. I'm just gonna run through the blue scale, okay? Excuse me a little bit of theory, but if you just want to go away and play the song, you've got enough to do that now. There's a few other, few other little blues licks you could play. Um, if you want to see some more, you're going to have to sit through the theory. And there's my, there's my carrot for you. So the blues scale looks like a minor pentatonic scale. Right? You might have seen that somewhere before, but it's got an extra note in. So the minor pentatonic goes open, third, fourth, fifth, tenth, and twelfth. Pentatonic means it's got five notes in it. So that's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and then you just repeat the first one. A blues scale's got all those notes in it plus one more, which is that, that bluesy note there on the sixth fret. So it goes like this. Open, third, fourth, oh sorry. Open, third fret, fifth fret, sixth, seventh fret, tenth and twelfth. So it adds this note here. Now I can play that on the uh, second string as well because it's the same G string, so it's like that. I'm just going to run through a couple of times and show you how to play it in some different positions. So I'll just get rid of my slide so I've got an extra finger. Hang on. It's just have it, having that slide on my finger, I haven't even used it yet. So. scale again so what's that on the bottom string I'm going open third fifth sixth and then open on the second open on the um, third string third fret and then fifth fret I could also play that last note open on the second string so either one of those like that or Play it to the next octave, I'll go like this. And now for another octave. There's your next octave there. So if I play it from the fifth fret on that third string, it's there, and then the third fret, that's the big bluesy note, on the second string, and then the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Right, that's your little blue scale bit. Then the eighth fret on the top string, and the, sorry, the sixth fret on the top string, and then the eighth fret on the top string. So I'll, I've mentioned the fret names already. I want to play it through so you can hear it. It's more important that you can hear it. All right, so. So play those notes like this. I'm not going to give you the fret names now. I want you to hear it. Watch my fingers, sure. But see if you can find it by listening. So by adding that extra note, that bluesy note there, that flat five, dimension to it and it's often used as a, as a note to resolve in either up one tone so like that or down yeah so Or 
end up from here to here. So you can hear that, that, that adding that extra tone and then using it with those two either side of it. Not like that, that's a bit lame. But you can really get some nice tension in amongst that little space in the scale. Um, likewise, I played a riff before, which was from there, the one. So if you want to get from there to there, or that note there on the seventh fret's the same as that one, do it quickly, don't go, unless you really want to, then do it like that, but usually it's used to get between the two of them. And it's nice to use like that without the four or without the five. Yeah? So, blue scale, learn your blue scale. Slide, same deal with the bending, yeah? So. So I'm sliding up from a flat five blues note. Up to the five, strong five, and then. Start the riff with that out of the tense blues note as well. Uh, a nice one to start a solo is. Here as well. Don't use the major with that though. That major third note, don't use the major with that because that's really bluesy and that's kind of sweet. So don't use those two together. Yeah? yeah? Alright, some more slide licks. So that sliding from the 11th to the 12th fret on the 3rd string there, it's the same as that. But you can use all your 12th fret stuff. So try and find ways to slide around this part of the um, neck as well. Yeah? That blues note, that's the one we're on about with this Catfish Blues, it's what makes this song so dark. Back in medieval times, they would, uh, it, it, was, it was illegal to play that note, literally, that you would be killed if you um, wrote or sung or played a piece of music with the devil's note in it. And it's perhaps no coincidence that the, that the uh, devil's note has found its way into the blues. Anyway, there you go. Catfish blues.